Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 332 on Now You Know. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at Climate Exchange. We're going to tell you how you can win a Tesla or a Rivian. So stay tuned. So we reported last week about Tesla cutting prices on their vehicles in China, Australia, South Korea, and Japan. And you had been bummed that prices at the time had stayed the same in Europe and the US. Well, I don't know if Tesla heard you last week, but Tesla slashed prices of all their cars in North America and across Europe. Last Thursday night, Tesla slashed prices in the U.S. Take a look. The Model Y Long Range, for instance, dropped from $65,990 to $52,990. Wait, I think you have a typo. That's almost a 20% drop in price. Yep, a $13,000 price cut. The Model Y Performance, for instance, dropped 18% from $69,990 to $56,990. And existing inventories of Giga Texas Model Y all-wheel drives dropped 21% from 61990 to 50990 So, wait, re regarding all that controversy about the IRS's $80,000 price limit for the Model Y, I mean, that puts the Model Y into the sedan $55,000 price category, um, especially for the five-seater. Uh, so is this why Tesla did this? Wait, explain again about that. So there, you remember, <laughs> let's go back. <laughs> um, there used to be the tax, $7,500 tax credit. It applied to most EVs. Um, then uh, it ran out for Tesla. Then we had the IRA or the Inflation Reduction Act, which was actually just a green thing. <laughs> and a big part of that was that uh, Tesla's going to get the credit again, but there was going to be restrictions on uh, the upper price limit of how much cars could cost. And it was going to be $55,000 for a sedan and $80,000 for SUVs, vans, and pickup trucks. And the Model Y is both <laughs> a sedan and an SUV which is wild, and it's because of weight. And that's the only way that the IRS can think about cars because all they think about is stupid numbers. Um, and so they said, well, the seven-seater weighs just a little bit more. And so the seven-seater Model Y was an SUV, qualified for $80,000, but if you got the five seater, which is cheaper, it was a sedan suddenly. And it and didn't qualify. Didn't qualify. A lot of SUVs, EV SUVs are running into this problem. Right. Um, but Tesla just dropped the price to below $55,000, so even as a sedan, it gets the tax credit, and that's amazing. So is this why Tesla did it, though? Well, according to a statement by a Tesla spokesperson in Germany last Friday, quoted by Reuters, at the end of a turbulent year with interruptions to the supply chain, we have achieved a partial normalization of cost inflation, which gives us the confidence to pass this relief on to our customers. So prices have been going up because of inflation, but is this signaling that Tesla has seen supply prices dropping and so they can pass those savings on to customers? That's what they appear to be saying. Tesla is very vertically integrated, so it stands to reason that if inflation is returning to normal levels, that Tesla would be one of the first automakers to feel the cost reduction because many of their inputs are materials that are less processed, like rolls of steel and aluminum for stamped parts and ingots of aluminum for gigapress bodies, etc. But back to the price cuts. Check this out in the U.S. Model 3 rear-wheel drive dropped 6% from $46,990 to $43,990. And wow, the Model 3 performance now qualifies for the federal tax credit. It dropped 14% from $62,990 to $53,990. You can now take an additional $7,500 off of that. So that's a Model 3 performance for $46,490. That's insane. Wow. Yep, and even the Model S and Model X got big cuts. The Model S dropped $10,000 to 94,990. That's a 10% drop. The Model S Plaid dropped $21,000 to 114,990, uh, a 15% drop. The Model X dropped $11,000 to 109,990. That's down 9%, and the Model X Plaid dropped $19,000 to 119,990. That's a 14% drop. And price cuts didn't end with the US. Tesla slashed prices across Canada. Yeah, the Model 3 rear wheel drive is now eligible for the IZEV 5,000 Canadian dollar incentive because of the price drop to 54,990. Even though there are about 2,000 Canadian dollars of additional fees, 
Transport Canada confirmed that the Model 3 rear-wheel drive does now qualify for that credit, Canadians. That's huge. And Tesla slashed prices across Europe. Let's take a look at a few of the countries to give you an idea. In Germany, the Model 3 rear-wheel drive dropped 6,000 euro from 49,990 to 43,990. That's 12%. Uh, here's more numbers for German Model 3 and Y prices. As you can see, whether it's Norway with the Model Y Standard Range Plus dropping a whopping 23%. Or France with the Model 3 Long Range dropping 15%. Or the Netherlands with the Model Y Long Range dropping 18%. Or the UK with the Model 3 Long Range dropping over 11%. Or Denmark, thank you to Tesla Club Denmark for this chart, with a 23% drop in the price of the Model Y Long Range. These are huge price decreases, and they are going to have a huge impact on sales, which tells me something different from the narrative that the fuddy media is trying to push. Now, do I think that Tesla was having a demand problem? No. Do I think that this price drop signals that Tesla is ready to increase production from Giga Berlin and Texas, which are starting to get into the swing of things? Yes. Tesla is ready to move some cars. This is going to be a great year for Tesla, despite what the stock price says. And I just want to stress, the Model Y has never, ever received a $7,500 tax credit, and it has just dropped in price so much. Do you know how many people are now able to afford this car? Again, as we've said before, as you drop the price of a vehicle by $5,000, you increase the number of people who can buy it by double. Yep. So I just <laughs> I just want to go back here for just one second. I just want to take. So the Model Y, first of all, dropped in price $13,000. So that would double, then double again, then almost double again. And then you drop it another $7,500. Yeah, so, so basically $20,000. $20,000. So that's. So that's two times two times two times two, which is 16, 16 times the number of people should be able to afford the Model Y. Yeah, it's insane. And and I want to tell you what happened with me, right? I got the cheapest Model 3 that qualified for the $7,500 uh, tax incentive, and I got a $2,500 incentive from my state. And so I was able to afford this car that I wasn't able to afford, right? And so I showed up to work in a Tesla and people went, you can afford a Tesla? Wait, how much does he get they, paid? How much does he get paid? And then they're like, okay, so he do, he's he's just this lowly engineer, right? And they were like, but I'm I'm the I'm his supervisor. I can afford a Tesla now. And so everyone in my office was just like, oh, this is a car that people can your, afford. Your parking lot changed over the course of six months. Like yeah, I've never people seen. People just they would come up to me at work and just be like, so I'm ordering my my car. I'm ordering my my Tesla. And I, and I I know I was working at a at a startup. It was glitzy and fun and stuff like that. But this is going to happen everywhere. Yep. People, I'm talking to people now, my friends and family, and they're going, "Wait, I can get a Model Y for cheaper than I can get a used Kia yep. SUV." And they're going, and it's the safest car in the world. Yep. Uh, we're going to talk more about all of the reasons why this is so exciting. I'm just so excited about it. And I'm so glad that we have this community that we've built over this time because I'm so excited to share this exciting time with you. The countdown is on for your chance to win a Tesla of your choice or a Rivian R1S SUV with any and all options. We are really excited to be working with Climate Exchange and their seventh annual raffle. The mission for Climate Exchange is fight the fossil fuel industry by advancing state climate policy. They're working towards a zero emissions economy to build a sustainable future that benefits everyone. You can help Climate Exchange with this important work through their annual fundraiser and win big. The grand prize is a fully loaded Tesla. Choose from a Model X Plaid, Model S Plaid, Model 3 or Model Y Performance. Or choose the Rivian R1S SUV or the R1T, which is Motor Trend's 2022 Truck of the Year with any and all options. And Climate Exchange will also pay the taxes. The full prize is worth up to $250,986. And the tickets are just 250 bucks. And they are only selling 5,000 tickets. So that helps your odds of winning. And you don't have much time left because the live drawing is set for February 24th. And if you don't win the grand prize, you can still win $10,000 cash prize for second place, 5,000 for third, 3,000 for fourth, and $2,000 for fifth place. So there's a lot of chances to win. Go to carbonraffle.org and enter for your chance to win. And thank you to Climate Exchange for sponsoring this channel. For instance, our Ford Plow episode, it's been really popular and we wouldn't have been able to even come up with our Plow solution without Climate Exchange's support. 
Their link is in the show notes below. I can't think of a better way to win a Tesla or a Rivian. So Intra Group, the Italian company that makes the 9,000 ton Gigapress, announced on their LinkedIn last week, another 9,000 T ready for shipping on its way to Asia. Now, the first Gigapress 9000T is, as we speak, being assembled at Giga Texas for use in making the Cybertruck. Uh, thanks to Joe Tegmeyer for capturing that last Friday with his drone. So where is this Gigapress going? My guess is that it's headed to Giga Shanghai, as Tesla is the only automaker that we know of that uses presses this big. What, to make the Cybertruck in China? Um, my guess is that this giant gigapress would be used to make one-piece single-body castings for Tesla's third-generation vehicle. That's the $25,000 vehicle that Elon talked about on the Q3 2022 earnings call that would cost half the price as the Model 3, Model Y platform. This is why listening closely to Tesla's earnings calls is so important. To stay up to date on what's happening, and that's why we will be covering Tesla's next earnings call uh, coming up later this month. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification right down there so you don't miss our coverage. Do you think that Tesla will talk about this during Investor Day on March 1st? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised since the press release said that the Generation 3 platform will be discussed. And we're going to talk about this more over on our Patreon Investor Club bonus story this week. So don't forget to support us on Patreon. The link is down below. It only takes a few seconds to sign up, become a patron, and get a lot of awesome perks every week. So one of the biggest factors that consumers consider when buying a vehicle is the quality, or how expensive it will be to maintain. You can see here in this survey of 8,400 U.S. adults last year by the Statista Global Consumer Survey, 43% said that quality is especially important in making a purchase. And we want to thank Tasmanian and Eva Fox for helping to parse some of the new data from the Clunker Junker, which analyzed cost data on the 185 most common cars in the U.S. to maintain over 10 years. Now, unfortunately, Clunker Junker divided the results up in kind of like this weird way into popular and luxury categories, and that made it hard to see the true winners and losers. But Tasmanian combined the data, and what we see is probably what many of us have known for years. Teslas are the cheapest cars to maintain. Here are the top five cheapest brands to maintain. We have Tesla, Lexus, Toyota, GM, and Porsche. And I want to point out that Tesla is half as expensive to maintain as, say, GM, and even though they're on the top five list together. Yeah. But I mean, what are those percentages after the brand names mean? That is the percentage of the car's value that it costs to maintain it. Oh, I see. So the lower the number, the better. Yeah. Okay. What were the five worst brands? Here are the five most expensive brands to maintain. Mitsubishi with an eye-watering 29.4%, <laughs> Hyundai, Ram, Jeep, and Chrysler. And if we break it down by model, we get even more interesting results. Here are the top five models which are the cheapest to maintain. We have the Tesla Model S, Tesla Model X, the Nissan GTR, the Tesla Model 3, and the Toyota Land Cruiser. But wait, I'm looking at the Clunker Junker website at the infographic that they made for the survey, and I don't see Tesla listed anywhere on their popular car brands with the best and worst relative maintenance costs. Right. This is why the work Tasmanian did was so important. Clunker Junker's dividing up of the data into popular and luxury hid the real results, which is that Teslas are some of the cheapest vehicle models to maintain. Now, what are the most expensive models to maintain? Here are the top five most expensive cars to maintain. The Ram Promaster City at 62%, the Kia Rio, 42% BMW X1, the Ram Promaster Cargo Van, so Promaster Strikes Again, and BMW Strikes Again with the X2 at 40%. Ouch, that Ram Promaster City costs about $23,000 to maintain, even though it only costs $35,000 to buy. Obviously, it costs a lot more than that. Now, at least Tesla does appear here on the Clunker Junkers infographic of luxury car brands with the best and worst relative maintenance. But look, the takeaway here is that Tesla's cost the least to maintain. All four of Tesla's models made the top 10 list of the best cars in terms of maintenance costs over 10 years. And that's just another reason why, as everyone spreads FUD about Tesla, you know that time-proven data tells the true story. Tesla's rule in just about every category, whether it's safety, efficiency, or quality. So comment below if this new data about Tesla's low maintenance costs would influence you to buy one. And that's not even the only story we have about why you'd want to buy a Tesla this week. All right, listen up, computer hackers. Wait. All right, I'm talking to you typing people with your hoodies on and your Guy Fox masks. Do you want to earn up to $600,000 or a brand new Tesla? All you have to do is hack into a Tesla. But not mine. 
In 2019, Tesla gave a Tesla Model 3 to a pair of white hat hackers that were able to exploit Tesla's software systems. In 2020, Tesla gave away another Model 3 and $350,000. And last year, Tesla handed out $75,000 for hackers who broke into a Model 3. But now Tesla is raising the stakes for the Pwn to Own contest. $600,000 and a Model S and Model 3 up for grabs. So hackers can target the Intel or Ryzen-based Model 3 or the Ryzen-based Model S. Tesla wants to see if anyone can hack the tuner, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or modem by gaining access to the vehicle's infotainment system and running their own code. The conference will be held in Vancouver from March 22nd to the 24th. Plus, you could be crowned the master of Pwn. And look, if you're asking, like, why is Tesla doing this, throwing money at hackers? It's really actually very smart. It attracts the best hackers in the world. It gives them a serious incentive. And it's actually cheaper than having a huger security team that has to attack themselves every day. They can focus on what independent hackers are discovering are their security weaknesses. And you might be saying, oh, it's so nice that all of these white hat hackers exist. The only difference between a white hat hacker and a black hat hacker is how much you pay them. Now, according to the Austin Business Journal, Tesla has filed a permit with the city of Austin for $717 million, 1.4 million square feet at Giga Texas. The new plan describes four areas at Giga Texas. The biggest is called Cell 1, 693,000 square feet, which should be completed by February 12th of 2024. The next biggest is the drive unit at 423,000 square feet to be completed in January of 2024. And the cathode building is next at 321,000 square feet, which should be done this year, December. And lastly, the cell test lab at only 2,560 square feet to be done by August of 2023. So in the permit, these projects are filed as new construction, but described as being ground up and complete interior finish out of the electric vehicle manufacturing facility. OK, so this is for completing work inside existing buildings at Giga Texas? That's my guess. I, I think a lot of the press has picked this up as expansion of Giga Texas. I don't think it's expansion. I think it's uh, construction finishing that's currently happening inside buildings that are already there. Um, and that seems to fit the timelines. You couldn't build new buildings as fast as they're saying to build them. Um, and so, for instance, cathode, that's the cathode building that they're already building, but they haven't done any interior work to. It's a separate permit. So comment below with your thoughts. But I think I'm right. I think this is just finishing off things they've already started building. And it's still exciting. Very exciting. Um, but. You know, because we get timelines. Right. And but it really shows you that the the mainstream news isn't like watching Joe Tegmeyer right. every day, um, which is just the most fun thing you can do. It's like just yeah. take a nice little break and just watch and see what hundreds and thousands of people are doing every day to make it yeah. Texas happen. It's freaking awesome. We love doing that at lunch, just watching Joe fly his <laughs> drone. But Tesla has just acquired a new one million square foot building in Texas. Yeah, according to the Houston Chronicle, Tesla has just signed a lease on this building at 111 Empire West in the town of Brookshire, which is outside of Houston. And Tesla has listed for some job openings at this location, like this one for associate manager of production control. And as some have pointed out, since the job description mentions a cell materials production area, this location might be making materials for cell production at Giga Texas. OK, so this location is about a two hour drive from Giga Texas. So is this to gain from the labor that's in Houston, but still be close enough to Giga Texas that transportation costs aren't that high? Comment down below if you have any thoughts on what might be happening at this building. Because, I mean, I did notice that it's right next door to an Amazon distribution center. And is that like because they can get things delivered faster? Like, I think it's just that you have Amazon distribution centers in certain places in the world and big warehouses just happen to be next to them because that's I mean, all it is. Yeah, they're good transportation routes, right. I'm assuming. I don't think that they're like Amazon shipping. There's not just some guy, you know, in his Kia dropping off thousands of pounds of battery cell materials and they're like who is that oh i guess that's amazon oh i thought tesla was going to open an amazon store and sell their batteries <laughs> even before the recent price cuts in china the tesla model y sold 315,314 units in china in 2022 making it the number one selling car in the country for cars costing over 300,000 rmb so basically in the luxury car segment in second place was the Mercedes-Benz GLC with 148,000 units. The number three spot went to the Audi Q5, which sold 145,000 units. The BMW X3, which sold 140,000 units. And the Li Auto Li 1 rounded out the top five at a distant 78,000 units. So think about that for a second. 
No, really think about it oh. for a second. Giga Shanghai started production in October of 2019. Then just three years later, the Model Y becomes the best selling car in China, the biggest car market in the world. But Tesla's a scam. <laughs> Tesla's a Ponzi scheme. Okay, so we're going to dive more into Tesla China sales news in Patreon bonus stories this week. So don't forget to join us and our other wonderful patrons there, all for just a buck a month. Now, Tesla didn't quite make it in the U.S. in 2021, though. Make what? It wasn't able to cinch the top U.S. luxury car brand in 2021. Was it able to do it last year in 2022? Mm, yes. Yeah! For the first time ever, Tesla has bumped BMW off of the top of the list. This is the first time in almost 25 years that an American car company has held the title and it wasn't even close. Not even close, but... According to the Automotive News Research and Data Center, Tesla sold more than 491,000 cars in the US last year, a 56% increase over 2021, and that is 158,612 more than BMW, which sold 332,000 cars in 2022, which is down 1.3%. So wait, even though the U.S. luxury car segment saw sales plummet last year by 8%, Tesla took the top spot? Yep. Mercedes-Benz came in third, followed by Lexus, Audi, Cadillac, Acura, and Volvo. Oh, and according to Experian, Tesla now has two-thirds of the U.S. EV market, that's more than all the other brands combined. I want to thank Cybertruck Owners Club for sponsoring today's show. Check out their website for Cybertruck news, discussions, and community for Cybertruck enthusiasts and future owners. And there you can find their crowdsource reservation tracker that you can update and find your place in line. Over on our Now Let's Review channel, we don't just review e-bikes and e-scooters. We also review EV chargers. And this week, Zach and I reviewed the Pion PowerFlex AC EV charger. This is a mobile charger that you can also mount on a wall. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, mobile or stationary. And that's a nice feature because if you're like me, I'm either leaving my charger somewhere, like when I go to visit someone or someone borrows my charger and doesn't remember to give it back. So what you're saying is... I don't know what I'm saying, actually, but I know that you can never have too many chargers. I guess that's what I'm saying. So what I like about the Pion is that it's really over engineered. It's one of the first ones I've seen that has triple fire protection circuitry. So if you're worried about fires in your garage... This might be a good choice. It's a bit pricey, but it's built like a tank and it's going to last. And for our patrons, you might want to watch the video because we tell you how you can win it. Yeah, we have a bunch of EV charger review videos coming out and we'll be giving away, I think, all of them. So maybe join our Patreon for a little as a buck a month so you can win them. So Jaguar just came out with an updated facelift for the iPace. Here it is. Check it out. Um, I don't see a difference. No? I mean, the lights look the same, the hood looks the same, the door handles and the mirrors, they're all the same. The light covers on the cheeks are the same. I mean, is it just this smooth grill? Well, I mean, in the body color door finishes, so basically like a chrome delete. And did they make any improvements to the range or the 100 kilowatt charging speed? No, but executive director of Jaguar's vehicle programs, Nick Collins, says, iPace has always offered a comprehensive package of performance, agility, technology, and everyday usability that the customers expect from a Jaguar, together with the smooth, quiet, and effortless driving experience that electrification offers. We've delivered exactly that, and now it's our latest model to benefit from our approach of offering more curated, richer specifications. So what does that mean? More curated, richer specifications. <laughs> I mean, it means nothing. It means nothing. it means fancy stuff and styling. <laughs> yeah, uh, but basically nothing to the powertrain. Look, I think the Jaguar buyers are into more curated, richer specifications. <laughs> I think that's what they want, and that's right. what they're getting. Right, because if they wanted a uh, good, uh, fast charging experience, they, they don't know what that means. They would buy it. Come on, <laughs> if you're buying, hey, look, I'm sorry, if you're out there and you bought a Jaguar, you're probably gonna unsubscribe. But if you bought a Jaguar after having the option to buy a Tesla, then you really don't know much about charging speed. You just like telling people in the office that you have a Jaguar. <laughs> Doug, is that your Jaguar? Yes, it is. It's a Jaguar. This is one of those stories that everyone wants to talk about out there in Tesla world, but there's not much to talk about. What are we talking about? So the Tesla autopilot full self-driving hardware leaks that seem to come out every week now, uh, that's what we're talking about. Oh, so, you know, this week, the tweet from Chris Zhang. Yeah, he's a pretty reliable source on Twitter of new Tesla stuff that's being spotted. So here we see what could be the new Tesla hardware forefront cameras that appear to now only have two high resolution cameras instead of the three lower resolution ones. 
And the camera hub appears to have a new heating fan system to keep the camera clear in colder weather, which is also being added to the B pillar. But I thought we heard that Tesla was going to mount cameras near the front of the car. Like, oh, right. Like near the headlights. Um, it was supposed to give like better views around corners and stuff. Um, but basically, we just don't have all the info yet. So it's fun to talk about, but nothing substantial to talk about. Right. I mean, what do you think? I mean, where are the cameras going? And is this the final iteration before full self-driving? Um, or is this just the Tesla China version, since we're seeing it in China and maybe they're going to have a different system? I don't know why you develop two systems instead of one, but maybe that's one of the possibilities. Right, because I thought that the three cameras was one long distance camera and two stereo cameras. And now is it like, well, we don't need the long distance one anymore because the two stereo cameras does the same thing? Well, if they're high resolution, then it doesn't really matter if it's long distance. Mm. So maybe that's Oh, because the focal point is doesn't yeah but it's not i don't know not the focal point it's the resolution no but i mean i thought some you'd focus like 20 feet in front of the car and others you'd focus to infinity you don't you focus them all to you just give them the tiniest little aperture so that everything's in focus Oh, so that probably explains why you don't need the third camera it's such high resolution that it does the job yeah i mean so that saves you a camera and all the processing along with it i don't know if this is it or if this is just some kind of prototype so remember a couple of weeks ago, we reported that Elon agreed to remove Tesla's steering wheel nag for FSD beta users who have driven more than 10,000 miles on FSD. Right. Holmar's catalog had asked Elon on Twitter and Elon agreed, saying that it would come in an update this month. Well, according to the Associated Press, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, has contacted Tesla about this disabling of the steering wheel nag, and it appears they aren't happy about the idea of getting rid of it. So the option to turn off the nag probably won't be rolling out this month then. Oh, it even has a sound. It goes nag, 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 nag. My thoughts, NHTSA, uh, if you are listening, is that this is actually a good idea. FSD beta is still a level two driver assistance feature, but it is advancing towards level three. And if drivers have successfully driven on FSD beta for 10,000 miles without a problem, these are the types of people you'd like to test out this new feature and see how it works. I mean, you can always turn the nag back on if it's not working safely, but how else are you going to move forward? But Nitsa, if you want to keep the nag and just let me remotely close my windows, that would be fine. I mean, please, anything to let me... I just want to close my windows. Tesla started collecting and sharing autopilot safety data back in 2018. Back then, it showed that Tesla's on autopilot were 8.5 times less likely to get into a crash than the average U.S. driver. One crash every 3.4 million miles driven in a Tesla versus one crash every 400,000 miles driven in an average U.S. car. But then, last year, 2022, Tesla stopped publishing this data. And now, without warning, Tesla not only published data for Q3 of 2022, but also the other missing quarters of 2022. So here we have a comprehensive picture of how Teslas have been doing when it comes to safety. Okay, so it's miles driven per accident. So the longer the line, the better in terms of safety. So 2018 at the bottom and the latest Q3 2022 data at the top. The gray line each quarter is the average U.S. driver. The light blue line in the middle of each quarter is a Tesla driven without autopilot. And the top dark blue line is a Tesla driven on autopilot. So what it looks like to me, if you want to interpret all these lines, is that the average American driver is getting safer, trending from about 350,000 miles per accident to around 650,000 miles per accident. That's good. Yeah, that's almost twice as safe as five years ago. Now, the average Tesla's not using autopilot, so just driving around using other safety features like early braking and stuff like that, but not on autopilot, is kind of lumpy. You see there that the lines are just kind of all over the place, but it seems to be averaging the same, about 1.4 million miles per accident, or about three times safer than the average U.S. driver. And then if we look at the dark blue, Tesla drivers using autopilot seems to be trending towards safer, from around 3 million miles per accident in 2018 to around 6 million miles per accident in Q3 of 2022, kind of following the U.S. average driver trend, about twice as safe as five years ago. So 6.26 million miles driven per accident on Tesla autopilot in Q3 of 2022 versus 652,000 miles for the average U.S. driver means that on average you can drive 10 times further using Tesla autopilot before you get into an accident versus any other car on the road. It's 10 times safer. Yeah, and just to give that some context, if you drove around the equator of the Earth 25,000 miles, if there was a road, mm. that would mean, uh, let me get my calculator. So that means you could drive around the equator of the Earth 250 times before you'd get into an accident in a Tesla. 
Wow. 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 So add this story to the Tesla lower maintenance story that we reported on this week. Add that to the Tesla price cut story. Oh, and don't forget the story last week where a Tesla fell off a cliff and everyone survived. And you can see why Teslas will continue to be the market leader. So Ford has told its dealers that if they want to sell Ford EVs, they must spend $900,000 and join Ford's EV program. Now, Lincoln is one of Ford's luxury brands. And up until recently, we didn't know how many Lincoln dealers would pony up and join Ford's program. Remember, if they didn't join now, they'd have to wait until 2027 for another chance to join. And until then, they can't sell any Ford EVs. Well, we just learned that 59% of Lincoln dealers are joining the program. Of 600 U.S. dealers, that means that 356 are opting in. This represents 88% of Lincoln's sales volume since most dealers that joined were either standalone or larger dealers. So remind me again what those dealers have to do. They must install at least two DC fast chargers and seven level two chargers at the dealership. So what Lincoln EVs will they be selling? Ah, well, Lincoln doesn't make an EV at the moment, although Lincoln says they'll have three Lincoln EV models by 2025. Oh, and by the way, this is the Lincoln Star concept. But didn't Ford say that they expect half of their global sales volume will be electric by 2025? Um, yep. And isn't that in two years now? Yep. And they don't have a car for their Lincoln brand yet. <laughs> and they aren't anywhere close to that number. I mean, hey, crazier things have happened, but uh, mm. not that crazy. I mean, you could flip the story and say that 41 percent of Lincoln dealers, probably the smaller dealers, just couldn't join this program because mm. they're like, wait, we're going to spend nine hundred thousand dollars and then have no car to sell. Yeah. It's interesting. BMW has recalled almost all of its iX, i4, and i7 vehicles in North America. Over 16,000 EVs are affected. So what's the problem? Well, according to the recall, there's an issue with the high voltage battery software. Quote, a misdiagnosis can sporadically occur within the battery management electronics, which could cause the electronic control unit to reset. If a reset occurs, this could cause an interruption of electrical power. In an electric car? Right. Basically, you could lose all power on the highway. Although, as they say in the recall, however, a restart of the vehicle is possible and would allow for continued driving. That's not something you necessarily think of doing at 80 miles an hour. Yeah, uh, I think that it would be a pretty harrowing few seconds. But, you know, luckily, since they're driving a BMW, they're probably already trying to pass traffic in the slow lane and should be able to pull over quickly. Although I'm sure they still won't use their blinker. Oh! That's great. We've pissed off um, BMW <laughs> drivers and Jaguar drivers this episode. That's great. Awesome. Bye. All right. It's time for Into the Future, sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving. And if you want to get this amazing Henson razor, you can also, if you use our code now, you know, at checkout, you can get 100 free blades. These are double-sided blades. So that means 200 free shaves with a fresh razor blade. Yeah. And thank you to Henson for helping sponsor the show. Yeah, we could not do it without them. And I wouldn't be freshly shaven every episode. These razors are really, really great. If you've ever suffered from razor burn or anything mm. like that, these can help out a lot. There's a lot of really cool information on their website. Um, you should definitely go check them out. So last year, we interviewed Ina Braverman, the CEO and founder of EcoWave Power, a Swedish startup, over on our Disruptive Investing channel. Yeah, that's the channel where we interview smart people doing very disruptive things in technology, transportation, and sustainable energy. You should check it out. And disclaimer, we are long investors on EcoWave. This is not financial advice. Do your own research before investing. So EcoWave makes these onshore power stations that are powered by ocean waves. When we talked last year, Braverman told us about EcoWave's power stations already up and running in Gibraltar and Israel. Last week, EcoWave unveiled what they say is the first ever onshore wave energy technology that will be deployed in the United States. The EcoWave power station is now running at the Alta Sea Ocean Institute at the port of Los Angeles in California. My question is, how does it work exactly? EcoWave powers Floaters, these blue buoy-like things in the water in the photo, uh, convert the up and down motion of the waves into electricity. I, I know that, but like how? How? So the floaters going up and down compress the connected hydraulic pistons that move hydraulic fluid into accumulators on land where the pressure builds. The pressure rotates a hydraulic motor, which rotates the generator, and then it generates electricity and that is transferred into the grid via an inverter. 
After decompression, the fluid flows back into the hydraulic fluid tank, where it is then reused by the pistons, creating a closed circular system, and the whole wave energy power station is controlled and monitored by a smart automation system to increase efficiency. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, EcoWave is planning to deploy a pipeline of over 400 megawatts of wave power stations in the US, Spain, Turkey, Portugal, and Israel. To learn more, go check out our DI video right up here. Also, the link is down below. All right, it's time for going green. Tesla has listed a job opening for project scheduler at its Corpus Christi, Texas lithium refinery plant. So this is the new plant that we reported Tesla was building in Robstown, Texas a few months ago? Correct. It's about 25 minutes outside of Corpus Christi, Texas, and Tesla said its purpose is developing a battery-grade lithium hydroxide refining facility, the first of its kind in North America, as well as facilities to support other types of battery material processing, refining and manufacturing, and ancillary manufacturing operations in support of Tesla's sustainable product line. So Tesla has said they will invest $365 million into the plant and employ about 165 full-time employees. So this job listing is exciting because it means that Tesla seems to be on track for opening soon. Yeah, and if any of you watching live near Robstown, maybe stop by and see how they're doing on construction and send us some photos or videos. Here's a map of where it's located. What, our viewers are supposed to know where this is from the map? Well, I mean, I assume if you live in the area, that's you're going to know what you're looking at. Okay, good um, luck. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's just still a field. I don't know. All right, it's time for sunspots. On this segment, we like to highlight solar, wind, and battery projects going on around the world for you so that you can see that things are changing and that renewables are growing fast. Now, for most people in the world, we just don't learn about these projects because mostly wind and solar farms and grid scale batteries are usually out of sight somewhere, even if they're happening relatively close to you. If we step back and look at the bigger picture, there is no denying that solar and wind is growing at an incredible pace. So now we usually don't like to use the IEA or International Energy Agency as a source of future predictions because they're so bad at it. Yeah, they repeatedly underestimate renewable growth. But even with their conservative outlook, Listen to this. IEA Executive Director Faith Birol said in a report that came out last month, the world is set to add as much renewable power in the next five years as it did in the previous 20 years. The IEA expects global renewable power capacity to grow by 2,400 gigawatts over the next five years. That's equal to the entire power capacity of China today. Renewables are set to account for over 90% of global electricity expansion over the next five years, and they'll overtake coal to become the largest source of global electricity by early 2025. Again, that's just a couple years away. And check out this infographic from Ember of solar capacity growth expected in Asia over the next seven years. So look at those curves in India, Indonesia, the Philippines, and even China, whose curve isn't really exponential at all. It's just linear, but it still puts them at over 600 gigawatts by 2030. Now, I want to go back to that 2,400 gigawatt number. 2.4 terawatts of anything is hard to imagine. If it helps, that's 8 billion solar panels more in the next five years, or basically a solar panel for every person on Earth. Yeah, and I think that's the problem. So many people don't picture how fast solar and wind are growing. And it's because these numbers, I mean, these, these aren't numbers we normally talk about at all. And so when you hear gigawatts, your brain just like, okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, think about it as panels. In the next five years, every man, woman, and child on Earth will be like getting a panel. Like, what? Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty astounding. And it's just the beginning, just the beginning. Like, I know that we've been saying it's just the beginning for a while. It is still just the beginning. Um, but, and we're going to talk about this over on the Investor Club bonus stories this week because uh, you can make a lot of money off this. That's true. All right, it's time for a video contributor stories. This is your part of the show. We need your story. So remember to send them in to us two minutes or less. Shoot them in landscape with good audio, no music, and send them to hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. What do we got this week, Jess? Our patron Tony experienced an accident and injured himself, and he explains how full self-driving is helping him. Hey, what's growing on, YouTube? Just wanted to make this really short video. Uh, tell you guys briefly about an accident that I had. I broke both of my forearms in an electric scooter accident. I was going about 18 miles an hour. Looked behind me to see if a car was coming and just completely lost control of the scooter and ate the pavement and broke both of my arms. So I'm going to be out for several months recovering from this. 
but one of the things that I'm experiencing right now where I'm coming to, to you from right now is from FSD 10.69.2.3, which has been able to drive me to and from my doctor's appointment because with my hands and my wrists the way they are, I have enough functional strength to turn the steering wheel. But if I had to turn the steering wheel for the duration of an entire drive, that would not be feasible. And it's been working out extremely well thus far. I'm, I'm basically a person on short term or you know temporarily disabled. And this, this service is providing a tremendous amount of value to me, allowing me the autonomy to get food, visit my doctor, uh, visit family. This would not be possible if I didn't have full self-driving beta. Tony, so sorry you got hurt. Uh, we wish you a speedy recovery. Thank you for that story. And be careful out there on your scooters. Yes. Wear your helmets. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. On our Patreon this week, we got a bunch of Investor Club bonus stories. We've got a bunch of Patreon bonus stories, uh, like including the video of what happened with Tesla's phantom braking accident. Yeah, and a uh, wireless charging robot. And so much more. So go over to patreon.com slash now you know. Help support us for as little as a buck a month, and you get all of these Patreon bonus stories. We'll see you there. All right, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories. It's time to give shout outs to the people that help support us so much on this channel. Who do we got this week, Jess? We have Jovika Dimitra Jovik, James Tian Tokian, John Schubert, Tyler Carroll, and Peter Brooks. Thank you so much for supporting us. We can't do the work that we do without your support. One of the cool perks of being a Patreon is that you can join in on our Patreon polls. We had a poll this week. What was the question? Is Tesla slashing prices a good or a bad sign? And I wonder what they say. <laughs> most people said that it's a very good sign. Two percent said it's a bad sign. Um, yep. Okay. So you but, know, but it shows that the media is wrong because most of the media is like, "This is bad." It means the demand is lower. Yeah. Blah blah. We don't know. All right, it's time for Elon's tweets of the week. So Elon retweeted The Boring Company, which talked about um, our privilege to provide transportation for the Las Vegas Convention Center at an amazing CES convention. So all of those CES conventioners got to ride if they wanted to. Fun loop stats. Average ride time was less than two minutes. Average wait time was less than 10 seconds. 94,000 plus total passengers. 10,000 plus passengers to and from Resorts World. And an average customer experience score of over 4.9 out of 5. So it's a pretty good showcase of what The Boring Company can do. Exactly. Elon said all four orbital launch pads fully loaded with rockets for the first time. Elon is talking about the Falcon Heavy, uh, two Falcon 9s ready for launch, and Starship 24 stacked on Booster 7 at Starbase in Texas. Yeah, he retweeted uh, the picture of it. And he also retweeted Tesla's tweet that the Model S and Model Y received the highest overall safety scores among every vehicle tested by Euro NCAP in 2022. By a wide margin there. Yep. Elon said some things that your party tells you are false and some things that the other party says are true. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> Starship launch attempt will be soon. Team are stepping into a series of tests prior to Starship's first test flight in the weeks ahead, including full stack wet dress rehearsals and hold down firing of Booster 7's 33 Raptor engines. Wow. That's going to be exciting. Elon retweeted Matt Taibbi's post about the Twitter file. So another Twitter file going up. And he retweeted Tesla's tweet. View your charging history and savings for the full year in the Tesla app. That can be helpful at tax season time. Mm. He retweeted that Tesla owners collectively saved $2 billion plus in 2022. Wow. And Elon explained that the Twitter bookmark button is moving to the tweet details page, fixing image length crop and other minor bug fixes next week. Elon said virtue rises with the sun. Twitter will publish tweet recommendation code and make account and tweet status visible no later than next month. Transparency builds trust. Yeah, so, so he's talking about shadow banning and stuff like that. He wants everyone to know what's going on behind the scenes. Then he talked about the economy. The higher the rates, the harder the fall. I wonder what would have happened in 2009 if the Fed had raised rates instead of lowering them. And this is a chart of what the Fed rate was. And yeah, they kept it low, which probably was why the economy did better for a while. Good assessment of our goal at Twitter. When do I want it? Right now. And then, of course, he's talking here about the launch that just happened the other day of the U.S. Space Force 67 mission with something up there. We don't know what kind of satellite it was. Elon said, and that's how we will land on Mars. And it was really cool watching that launch because you could see the Mechazilla 2 um, at 
Kennedy Space Center that they've built. So yeah. it's exciting. Well, and you get to see two um Oh, I mean, of course. two landings I mean, of course. at but the same time. Aren't we used to that by now? Yeah, but this is a drone shot of it. <laughs> it's a really cool. It was really nice. And that's a picture of Falcon Heavy as it ascends. Wow. Elon said Instagram makes people depressed and Twitter makes people angry, which is better? Uh neither. <laughs> neither. Kudos to the BBC for self-labeling its state affiliation. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. And this is also part of the show where you have to get involved. You, you got to share your stories, your photos, your videos with us so that we can share your stories with everyone else. Max spotted this crimson wrapped Model Y while taking delivery of his girlfriend's Model Y in Carlsbad, California. Congratulations. Jay saw this EA charging station being worked on by a tech apparently driving a Mercedes Benz EQC in Plymouth, Mass. That's the one that we got stuck at. <laughs> Thank you for fixing they're it. Finally, they're <laughs> finally fixing it. Only took six months. We reported it. We reported you. it six months ago. Thank you, EA. Great work. <laughs> Robert shared this picture of his Model 3 parked next to a Ford E Transit van at Walmart in Chandler, Arizona. He also spotted this cruise automation Chevy Bolt in the same parking lot. Here is Mandy and Robert showing off their brand new Model Y in Zurich, Switzerland. Congratulations. <laughs> It's awesome. Chris sent us this picture of the Hummer EV and a VW ID4 in Oregon. Victor found this Rivian R1S parked at the Home Depot in Laguna Niguel, California. Mosin sent us this picture of a BYD EV he found in Dubai. Hmm. Didn't know they were there. Dady and Katie found these lucid airs around St. Louis, Missouri. Mindauga spotted this Chevy Volt with what? a solar panel on top of it in Lithuania. Wait, so are they like delivering the solar panel or do you think that's plugged into the that's car? It's charged in the car, I bet. Wow. I want to know more. And James sent us this video of an EV school bus he spotted in Raleigh County, West Virginia. So quiet. I love electric school buses. That's so awesome. All right, it's time for supercharger reviews. This is your job. You go out there and you review them for us. Let's see what we got. Hey, Zach and Jesse, I go by Boff. We are at the Apostle Robles supercharger. It's a uh, 22 stall supercharger. And right now we are charging at 124 kilowatts or so. I'm towing a Iron Horse trailer with my 2020 Long Range Plus Model X. As you can see, there's tons of stuff here, shopping, food, Starbucks, you name it. Um, but I'm gonna have to take points off for ease of access for towing Teslas. Uh, I happen to pick a decent spot to tow and happen to be not so busy to park the way that I am. But if it was a busier time, this is going to be a hard time and you're going to have to unhook to uh, go ahead and charge. There's really no dedicated area that I could tell for towing. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Now you know. Hi, Zach and Jesse. We're here in Rockaway, New Jersey. Um, we're at a supercharger with 12 stalls. We're relatively close to PetSmart, Panera, uh, a pizzeria, a movie theater, and a shopping mall. So we're really in the middle of, it, of everything over here. We give it a nine out of 10. And now you know. know. Hello, Zach and Jesse. This is Jose and David. We're here at the outlet shops in Woodstock. Georgia. Uh, close to 575 exit number nine. Um, this is a brand new Supercharging, 12 stalls. 250 kilowatts. It has several of the amenities we like. We have trash cans, we have Wi-Fi, we have bathrooms, we have food courts. Uh, there are other several uh, food options around. And it's a shopping around. center. It's a shopping center, it's open. Your dog can walk around a little bit. You can walk around a little bit. So, now you know. Now you know. The San Francisco Bay Area is fortunate to have a large number of superchargers. And it got a little more fortunate recently with the opening of the San Bruno supercharger off Skyline Boulevard, Highway 35, and the intersection with San Bruno Avenue. The chargers are located in the parking lot of the Lunardi's supermarket. And it's just across from Eco Gasoline with its own Eco Mart just across the street. Lunardi's is open from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. and has restrooms and a wide variety of items for purchase. The superchargers are located in the western end of the parking lot. I'll rate this supercharger a 7 out of 10. After 8 p.m. you'll have to go to the Ecomart for any facilities or services. And it is in a fairly isolated location, not really close to any major highway, 
It's also possible that with 12 stalls, it can be quite busy during certain hours, but it's 250 kilowatts charging, and so you'll get charged pretty quick. So San Bruno Supercharger is worth a stop. Thank you so much for doing Supercharger reviews. Uh, again, we have a spot on our website where you can upload your own. You can also check out all the Supercharger reviews that everyone has done on a map. So if you're planning out a trip, you can see what the Superchargers are going to look like. What do we got for new superchargers in the world, Jess? So you mean just in the last week? Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot. Starting with the three stall in Haifei at the Tianyu Center in China. Number 156 in Germany is the 20 stall in Platling, Germany. The two stall 150 kilowatt in Shizhuang at Eujtong, China. The two stall 150 kilowatt in Beijing at Wisdom Valley, Yuji, China. Number 16 in Utah is the eight stall in Moab at North Main Street. The three stall in Zhuhai at Legend Pangdu Plaza, China. The six stall in Zhengzhou at Wanding Plaza, China. The three stall in Taiwan, North America, N1, China. North no America? <laughs> <laughs> number 66 in Taiwan is the six stall in Taipei at Xinyi Hontai, number two exchange square, Taiwan. The eight stall in British Columbia in Merritt at DeWolf Way, Canada. The six stall in Wenzhou Longgang at Xinhong Plaza, China. The four stall 150 kilowatt in Langzi Paralong Plaza, China. Number 175 in Canada is the six stall in Morris in Manitoba in Canada. That's the fifth in Manitoba, by the way. Number 39 in Washington is the 12 stall in Vancouver, Washington. The three stall in Zhengqing at Rails at Railway Station Complex, China. And number 1581 in China, number 4695 in the world is the three stall at Mount Segunyang, Segura Cultural Tourism City, China. A lot of good work there for the week. Oh, and so I remember that we were giving away a charger. So if you head on over to our Now Let's Review channel, we're going to be doing lots of EV chargers. And uh, when we're done reviewing them, Jesse and I can't use them. So we're going to give them away to our patrons. Did we get a winner this week? We did get a winner. Um, our The winner is Pam. Congratulations, Pam. Uh, she wrote in. She says, I've been following you guys for a long time and a $10 a month Patreon member. Thank you because I value all of your content. Even though we financially couldn't pull the trigger on a car, I kept watching you. Even though my hopes of a car were getting dimmer and dimmer with price hikes, I kept watching you because you kept me alert and still wanting a Tesla. Yesterday was our day. Oh my God, when the price cut was made and the IRA credit applied, we got one of the few left in inventory in Chicago. A Model Y long range, all wheel drive, white with tow hitch, exactly what we wanted. 30 minutes later, all Chicago inventory for sub $55,000 cars were gone. We pick up on Wednesday and they are taking our 16 year old Prius. We have our garage all wired, but no charger yet. And this would be the icing on the cake. We have been absolutely depressed thinking that a Tesla would never be in our future. And this turn of events has made our year. I'm legally blind with a guide dog and my husband has to do all the driving. Having the safety features of the Tesla will make our long trips much less tiring for him. We feel like we have won already because we are getting a car. Thank you for all you have taught us about Tesla. Well, Aww, Pam, that's awesome. Thank you so much. We're going to ship a that right out wonderful, to you. Wonderful. Yeah. And we're going to be sending that out to you uh, very soon. Um, so don't splurge for a charger yet. We'll, we'll get it to you. Look, all these people that you're seeing scrolling by here, they're people like Pam who help support the show. That's why we love trying to do things for you guys. I mean, not only are we making content for you on Patreon bonus and Investor Club, but yeah, when we're done with reviewing a charger, we love to give it away and give it to you guys. So that's what we're doing. And I'm so excited because it's going to be used. Like, yes. you know, it's not just going to be sitting in someone's trunk. They're going to use it. Oh, it's just so... Look, I get all warm and fuzzy. This is, I think, why Jesse and I just do the show every week. Yeah. Like, we just love being part of this community of people who want to do the right thing. And I'm just, ah, I want to give everyone a hug. I know. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Now you know.